Hello YouTubers, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I would like to talk to you about Sony's strategy and uh, how they approach the market at this moment with the release of the new Sony A7 Mark III. And in my opinion, uh, this marketing strategy, what they are doing now, it is really good for everyone. So let's discuss a little bit about this in detail. <coughs> Now, if you follow my channel, you probably know that I was a Sony user pretty, I don't know, about three, four years ago, three years ago, four years ago, something like that. And then I went back to Nikon for some reasons. Now, I don't want to get involved in this too much because it will be too long. You know, the video will be too long, but I had my reasons why I went back to Nikon. And obviously, in the meantime, Sony evaluated, you know, and, and they... Uh, they were better and better and they, they tried to, uh, to work on the mistakes they did and they successfully did it, I'd say. So at the moment there is a completely different situation, especially with the release of this new A7 Mark III. And also in this uh, situation there is a big help for them that Sigma and Tamron got into the game and they announced new lenses. Sigma especially, they announced nine lenses in the Sony A-mount lineup and Tamron announced one of the zooms, one of the Holy Trinity, how they call it, you know, it's um, the 28 to 75 f2.8 zoom lens. Now, <clears throat> we all know that, especially wedding photographers, they like to have this zoom range 15 to 35, 24 to 70, 70 to 200. That's why they call it Holy Trinity or something like that. But anyway, it's um, important for a portrait wedding photographer to have at least a 2470, 70 to 200, who is a zoom shooter. Now, I am a mixed shooter. I don't shoot only zooms. I, zoom, I shoot zooms and primes in the same time. But not everybody does like that. And because of these third party zooms and primes, they are available now at the market. The one and the biggest disadvantage in Sony, which was the lenses, is kind of disappeared. So um, now what is Sony trying to do here with this strategy? Because it is quite strange, you know, when you look at the, the price point of this A7 Mark III and the specifications. I mean, you get a lot for your money. That's really, really strange, I tell you. I mean, that camera has the autofocus from the A9 and, and uh, the only thing is, is missing is the high megapixel sensor from the uh, from the A7R Mark III. Uh, and then if, if it would have the high megapixel sensor from the A7R Mark III, it would be even better than the A7R Mark III, let's be honest. Because uh, the, the autofocus is not as good in the A7R Mark III like in the A9. But anyway, that doesn't matter. What they did, they picked up things from the A9 and from the A7R Mark III and they jumped into this a7 Mark III and that is really really strange in my opinion to jump so many good things in that camera for that price point the price point why did they do that now in my opinion and this is only my opinion but with uh, if how I followed Sony through these years I kind of see what they are doing and this is really good for us for all of us even for those ones who doesn't use Sony or who doesn't want to use Sony this will be great because what they do with this camera, it is exactly the same uh, step what they did with the A6000 and the A7R and the A7 and the A7S. If you think back those years, those cameras were very affordable and full with innovations, full packed with everything, you know. Now, obviously, there were many things I was complaining about those cameras because I owned them. I used to own them, sorry. I used to own them and I used them a lot. And there were a lot of things I was complaining about those cameras, but that is gone now because they, they resolved almost everything. There are only a few little things here or there, you know, but that's, there's no perfect camera. So uh, what they did then, they tried to get the market, you know, they tried to get the attention of the photographers with good price and great product. Now over here, they do again, they packed every feature that it's possible you know even in video i mean in some situations in some situations the a7 mark III will be better for video than the a7s i mean that's ridiculous and the first and the foremost you know the the situations is when you want to film yourself 
the A7S Mark II has not a great autofocus, let's be honest, you know. But the A7 Mark III has great autofocus. It will follow you, it will track you, no problem. So, like I said, in some situations it will be even better. So they are kind of like like cutting the, the, the branch behi behind them, you know. It's like kind of nonsense what they are doing, but it's not. Because what they try to do now, they try to get the attention of the photographers and especially for wedding photographers they are going now with this camera with the E7 Mark III and I think that they are succeeding. In my opinion they succeeded to, to get the attention of people and uh, this camera will be successful. Now in my opinion in Photokina 2018 it will, the, the APS-C version will follow. The successor for the A6500 A it will follow. And I am really, really interested in that camera, I tell you. Again, because uh, if you buy a Sony A7 Mark III, it's really good to have a backup camera like a, a crop camera, you know, with, uh, like the A6500. Now, if they would do an A6500 version, let's say an APS-C size uh, camera, with dual SD card slot and these kind of specifications like the A7, that would kill, I tell you. And that would be the best and in my opinion they will do that in my opinion maybe it will be a little bit higher price point like the a6500 but it will have all all of this this is my that would be the logic move after this one in my opinion now why is this good for everyone it is good because if you look around in Nikon world, in Canon world, in Pentax world, in Olympus world, in Fuji world, if you look around everywhere, you see that they try to, uh, they bring out new cameras, but they don't really get new innovations in those cameras. They don't really give you anything for an upgrade. I mean, I look at Nikon upgrades and uh, I'm like, okay, whatever, you know. Okay, now the, the Nikon D850, it's a different story because it's a different sensor completely, you know, and that's, that's different. But the price is different as well. But if we look at the, the Nikon D7500, uh, you know, the 7500, that's not an upgrade from the 7200. That's, and I have a video about this and uh, I think it's a joke what they did over there. And I really... Uh, well, I don't say I hate Nikon, but I really don't like Nikon because of that move. That was a really, really unfair move. I understand that they want to push you towards the 500 because that's an expensive camera, but that's your problem. Why do you force me to go to buy that one? That's ridiculous, you know, and I don't like that in Nikon. But anyway, that's only one example. There are plenty of examples. Let's, let's not speak about Canon because Canon is really a joke in this territory. Canon have excellent lenses and excellent camera bodies, but the upgrades, you know, they are just ridiculous. Like, look at the 5D Mark IV. I think half of the Canon shooters, when, when they released the 5D Mark IV, half of the Canon shooters, they, they pulled their hair and they, they just left Canon. That's ridiculous. So that's why it is good for everybody. If Sony brings cameras like this on the market, they, they force Canon and Nikon and Fuji and all of them to do something. Because look at the Fuji X-H1. I have Fuji X-T20 and I plan to buy the X-H1 or X-T2 or whichever. I, I was planning to buy that camera. But when Sony arrived with this camera on the market, I think twice. Why? Why should I buy an APS-C size camera for 2000 euro when I can buy a full frame camera for 2000 euro? I understand that I have the lenses. Yes, correct, fair enough, yeah. But in the same time, now, Sigma and Tamron is on the market, so they are, those lenses are not really expensive. So with these lenses on the market, you know, it will be very, very easy, you know, to, to get into full frame system because these lenses are affordable and, well, they are much more affordable than Sony lenses anyway. So um, why, is, uh, why is this helpful, you know, for, uh, for us, for photographers, for anybody, even if you don't want to use Sony? Because Sony will force Nikon, Canon, Fuji, whatever, they will force them to do something. They will, they will make them to do something. They will have to accept this challenge, you know, otherwise they, they recognize they are defeated. And in my opinion, this is really good for all of us. 
And let's see the example, the Fuji, you know, that I, I own the Fuji X-T20 and I plan to buy, I used to plan to buy the X-T2 or the X-H1, but let's be honest, it's, um, it's nonsense for me to buy that, you know, but when I get for the same money, I can get a full frame camera, you know, it's, it's just nonsense. So, uh, in my opinion, this, with this move, Sony forced uh, Canon, Nikon and the rest of the manufacturers to do something and that is really really good for us for everybody because now Nikon will have to act they will have to uh, to do something Fuji will have to act because they just released the the XH1 and if they if they don't do anything you know that camera will not sell in my opinion well maybe if somebody's in the Fuji system they will buy but if you are not into Fuji system and you want to get a new camera, you definitely will not buy the Fuji X-H1, in my opinion. I would not do that anyway. But this will be good because Fuji has to do something now. Either they will have to reduce a little bit the price of the camera or they will have to release a new camera or whatever. So that's why it will be good for all of us. And that's why all the time, even when I was a little bit angry on Sony and I was, I was complaining about uh, these things, you know, in Sony world, I was always saying that I hope that Sony will succeed. Because if they succeed, that's a fair competition. And that is good for us. Competition is always good for us. So, I hope that this video was helpful to you guys. I hope that you liked it. And uh, if you think that I forgot something, or if you uh, want to add something to this video, feel free and leave a comment down below. Let me know your opinion, guys. What do you think? If Sony is doing a good job or not? If this is good for us or not? In my opinion, it is really good for us. Feel free and leave a comment down below. <clears throat> if you would like to support this channel, uh, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell button near the subscribe button to get notified when I upload another video. And uh, other than that, I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.